media. As consumers, we are bombarded by it at every turn like the Incredible Hulk being bombarded by gamma rays. But what makes some media endure, while others are banished to the forgotten black hole of obscurity, never to be heard from again? Who or what decides this? Hetero life mate Steve and Yehel want to know, and they want to know now. This is Obscurity Now. now, now, now. Who could it be? It's those problematic podcasters, Obscurity Now. What's up, man? How's it going? <laughs> I'm doing uh, great. I'm having a spurloosh kind of a day. Uh, oh, God. Just you a real the... kapow. No, no, no. The first one you picked just sounds disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was legit one of the ones from the uh, final fight scene. In oh, this, I'm in sure this movie. it was. Um, like, when exactly? I should have looked this up before we got into this, but. I'm just wondering when acid was created because I'm quite certain <laughs> that at least the writers, uh, if not all of the like people behind the camera, were probably on it at some point in their lives. Uh, yeah, it's it, like it's an experience. This movie, even the opening of it, like uh, lets you know, like it doesn't say something like the film is for like lovers of right. absurdity. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Before we get too deep, if you're unsure what we're talking about, we're talking about. Uh, Batman 1966 uh, the movie and this of course is obscurity now uh, my name is Steve and with me is the boy wonder uh, yeah hell the uh, yes uh, I love wearing pantyhose when fighting crime yes I guess that's what on my legs though not on my face because I'm not a criminal <laughs> Or, so just to be or a sex pervert, um, yeah. at least not publicly. Uh, uh, pl please don't kink shame. Uh, <laughs> you're right. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't want us to lose our uh, pantyhose audience. You're right. Hey, uh, as long as you're not hurting anyone while wearing the pantyhose on your face, yeah. that's yeah. it's your business. It's it's the American way. And this way. is a film for pantyhose lovers. Oh, uh, <laughs> dreamers, uh, <laughs> all kinds of people. It says so at the beginning. Uh, so basically what we do here, if this is your first time joining us, is we take a look at uh, old or soon to be forgotten media and uh, try to decide whether it should be uh, remembered or toss in the black hole of security of security obscurity <laughs> never to be heard from again and uh and although of course uh, batman is probably the least obscure superhero in the entire i don't know lexicon if that's the yeah. uh, of superheroes but there are people being born every day, <laughs> young people, if you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> who never experienced the wonder that is uh, the Adam West Batman show. And who knows, maybe they've never even seen uh, the Batman movie. Uh, so that's why we're here to talk about it, uh, to try to figure out whether you should watch it or not. So, uh, Yehel, are you a Batman guy? Yes. Uh... At times, like it depends. Like I like some of the uh, arcs. Like I really like the Court of Owls arc, mm -hmm, for example. Mm -hmm. But like I've never been a, you know, like like read every monthly issue of Batman kind of guy. So I right. get into arcs though here and there. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, <laughs> there's like guys who've like you know who've read the comics, and that's one kind of Batman guy. And then there's other ones who are just like, dude, Batman, he's so bad at, you know, a bat, Batman. yeah, a bat bro. Oh, I wish, I hope there's gonna be R, I want this next Batman movie to be R rated because I want him to kill a guy. Like, it's like, <laughs> you're talking about the Punisher, man. Like, let's see, and you're right, like, uh, you know, depending on the writer and who's handling Batman, I too uh, can enjoy uh, Batman. I like him when he's treated like the pulp character that he is. Because a guy mm -hmm. wearing a bat suit murdering people is uh, insane, uh, basically. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, of course, I mean, I assume you watched the Batman uh, 66 show and probably this movie when oh, yeah. you were a young lad. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've watched it as an adult, like, occasionally. <laughs> uh, it would air on, uh, I, I think maybe g4 or mm -hmm. you know one of those like cable channels g4 and wow, uh, i haven't heard that in a long time <laughs> dude g4 is actually back i heard uh, yeah in a way but mm -hmm. not really right like, nobody's hardly is anyone's watching their youtube videos it's kind of sad oh that is but sad. um 
anyways uh yeah i i loved the batman show growing up and uh even as a kid you know like i think it's very obvious that it's like silly mm-hmm. and ridiculous mm-hmm. but there's something about it that at least to me was just kind of like i don't know fun to watch because it doesn't take itself seriously at all oh absolutely uh i mean it usually i remember it coming on either before or after cartoons which is the perfect place to put mm-hmm. it and uh just being uh, riveted like in with every episode especially <laughs> the uh the two-parters uh i mean that was yes i mean chances are like i mean batman was probably my you know introduction to uh, superheroes um even though he's really more of a of, of a pulp character than a than a superhero per se but we're not here to to argue that um yeah, but uh, but yeah, the show is great, and uh, and so is the movie. I I remember this is one of those VHS tapes that we had that we uh, wore out. Do you remember the first time you saw the movie? Uh, I was definitely a kid. Mm. Uh, I, I must have seen it like on TV. I don't think that we rented it the first time I saw it, but I do remember seeing it like for rent at you know rental stores when that was a thing. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they used to like air this sort of like chopped up in uh, you know in episodic format? Or am I? It seems like something uh, they would do. I could see that being done because you can. That's one of the things about the movie, like rewatching it. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, this feels like five episodes. Sure, yeah, uh, it's got that chipmunk adventure together. vibe where it's just one yeah. really long uh, episode. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so who uh, who among the villains? Um, we'll just talk about. Okay, so basically, uh, you know, we're not going to get too deep into it uh, here until I, you know, put the magical bumper. But so basically, it's Batman <laughs> and Robin versus the Catwoman, Penguin joker and uh riddler (laughs) for some reason all their henchmen are pirates which is so stupid uh but uh (laughs) so among those villains who would you say your favorite was oh man um you know that they did a pretty good job of giving everybody like equal time and like interesting things to do <laughs> yeah even though they're say, all base they all basically act the same but <laughs> yeah yeah there, there's yeah. not a whole lot of difference in personality no. between them that that's that's a fair point but i would say if i had to pick one maybe the penguin just because he really has to commit to being the penguin he like waddles when he walks like a penguin sure uh is that who you so liked when I, you were younger no when i was younger i would say Probably the Joker and the Riddler, oh, oddly yeah. enough, were my two favorites. Yeah, the Joker. I feel like the Riddler got the short end of the stick in this um, in this movie. He had the the least to do. He probably um, has the least to do. Yeah. And man, I watching this. I can't remember how long it's been since I have watched this film, but um, I really f- felt like uh, I feel like Jim Carrey really studied. Uh, what's his name? Right. Yeah. The um, his name is. Uh, Shoot. Well, I, we'll get I to the IMDb. Frank. Yeah, Gershwin. Gershwin, yes. Yeah, like Frank Gershwin. I was like, wow, he really studied him, like, and you know, brought uh, he brought it for Batman Forever. Um, so that's at least one of the highlights of that movie. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I would definitely say the Joker. And I think even watching this, I, I can see why you picked the Penguin. But uh, but yeah, the Joker, at least because. I understand the Joker. Like he's a guy who. Does, oh, I mean, Steve, uh, do we need to get you on the uh, the the psychiatrist couch? <laughs> no, no. I mean, by you understand the Joker. Okay, so here's the thing. All right, the Riddler purposely gives clues within rid- within riddles to get Batman to catch him. The Penguin, yeah. like, he's just. What does he do? Like, uh, I mean, I I understand. I <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like I got the Penguin in the Batman Returns movie. I don't even get him in the comics. Like, he's rich. Is he supposed to be like a guy who he's like a tax evader or something? All these guys must be like loaded, right? Because uh, the penguin in this movie, he buys an old submarine right. from the U.S. government. Yeah, that's it. He's basically like, okay, so I guess judging from this movie, the penguin is like, uh, he appears to be like, a, and even from, I guess, uh, the Tim Burton Batman Returns. He appears to be like a decent sort of law-abiding millionaire on the outside, but he's really this big, like, 
you know, law breaking racketeer guy. Um, right, right, right. Yeah. Which I mean, to an eight year old and even here I am 39 and I barely get it. I'm just like, yeah, I don't really get it. But the Joker, it's like, you get it. He is, uh, he likes jokes. He likes telling jokes. And then his jokes are also very dangerous. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very simple. He likes jokes. They just happen to be dangerous jokes. And, um, yeah. I do want to say hi to, uh, Chris Perry in the chat here. He just said, Hey, Hey, he's, uh, I know, I know he's been, uh, supporter of my channel for a long time so so i have to send a shout out to chris awesome welcome chris thanks for joining us um but uh who you hell is your favorite batman villain overall overall uh that's a tough one um i mean i i hate to like be so pedestrian but i guess the joker but because you know the writers have given him the most love i feel like sure and the most attention and sure uh so yeah, I, I, I guess by default it, it would be the Joker. I'm a uh, I'm a Two Face man. I love Two Face. Yeah, he, that's I, I almost went with Two Face. Uh, I think um, the Aaron Eckhart portrayal was uh, awesome, and he's especially good mm -hmm. in the uh, the new um, Long Halloween animated film. If you get a chance to watch that, um, and also I think the most underutilized villain, and you don't have to have one or not, but. He's only in one episode of the uh, of the animated series, and I don't even know if he ever made it to Batman sixty six. Is uh, the Clock King? Do you remember the Clock King episode? Oh my God! Yes. Now that you mention it, I do. Yeah. He was so good and like so deadly. Like, but he never gets any like any love. But uh, whatever. I'm just yeah. That's there. You go, Clock King. Everyone, make it make it happen. DC EU or Scott Snyder, whoever's involved. Uh, but uh, anyway, how many times? How many times have you seen this movie, do you think? Oh, man. Um, I mean, it was on, I'd say, repeat when I was uh, when I was younger. And then, gosh, I can't even remember the last time I sat down and watched it. Um, it's, man, it's I think I watched 40? this movie like five years ago. Really? <laughs> on wow. my own. Yeah. That's, that's dedication. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've probably seen this movie. I almost didn't even have to watch it. But I was like, no, 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 I should watch it. It's been like five years. But wow. Yeah, so I, I've probably seen this movie like a ten dozen times maybe. But, uh, oh, Chris Perry mentioned Mr. Freeze. I had actually kind of forgotten about Mr. Mr. Freeze. Yeah, Freeze that's another. is almost an anti-hero, depending on which, like, origin they go with. But uh, anyway. I, I think he's very sympathetic. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so you ready to dive even deeper into Batman the movie? Ready to dive deeper than a shark filled with dynamite in the <laughs> sea, my God. <laughs> How did you watch this movie? I'm just curious. I just rented it on Prime, Amazon Prime. Yeah, yeah, it's a couple bucks. Same here. Uh, so, if uh, you do, if you don't want this 40 year old movie spoiled for you, you should go watch it on uh, Amazon Prime. Because uh, yeah, we're just going to be talking about like everything uh, about it. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so we already talked to, well, let's just jump right into the IMDb here. Um, Batman the movie was released July 30th, 1966. Boy, I don't remember those days because I wasn't alive. Um, and then it was directed by Leslie H. Martinson. And the writers are Lorenzo Simply Jr. He, I guess he wrote the television series. And of course, it's yeah. based upon the character created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger, for those who don't know, even though his name isn't here, and uh, William Dozier, based on the series. I guess he created the series. Um, and uh, I'll just jump into the synopsis here. I picked a rather long one, but here we go. The, the, it was it's either, probably for the best, actually. Yeah, you had a ch I had a choice between a, the really, really short one or the other ones were kind of long. But anyway, here we go. <clears throat> They, should I read in my normal voice or the narrator voice? <laughs> I, I say go for the narrator voice. The arch villains of the United Underworld, the Joker, the Penguin, the Riddler, and the Catwoman combine forces to dispose of Batman and Robin as they launch their fantastic plot to control the entire world. 
From his submarine, Penguin and his cohorts hijack a yacht containing a dehydrator, which can extract all moisture from humans and reduce them to particles of dust. Batman and Robin track the villains to their bat boat and use bat charged missiles to force the submarine to surface. And then it just ends there. <laughs> then they have a fight. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> I know, I know. That is weird. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, basically everything you need to know. And as we said before, it's basically, uh, I really love the, um, the logo that they had inside the villain's hideout. Um, it was they, were, yeah. they called themselves like the United Underworld, Underworld. Of, of Criminals, yeah, something along those lines. And uh, <laughs> oh man, it was just so good. Anyway, would you like? Uh, would you care to do the actors here? Sure. There is a really long cast list, mm-hmm. so obviously not going to go through all of it. Just mm-hmm. highlight some of the. Uh, more important ones, obviously, everybody knows Adam West. He's Batman slash Bruce Wayne. Burt Ward mm-hmm. plays Robin slash Dick Grayson. And Burt Ward went on to do, like, a visual effects in movies later, which I was not aware of. Nor I. Um, yeah. Lee Merriweather uh, plays Catwoman mm-hmm. uh, slash uh, Kit Cat. <laughs> Kit Kat. <laughs> I used to, I'm pretty sure I called her Miss Kit Kat when I was like eight years old. Yeah, well, I actually uh, called her Larissa because that's how I knew her from Star Trek, the original series. Oh, uh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> should I do it now or do you have more than one? Uh, well, okay. also, I do want to mention Frank Gershwin. Oh, uh, of course. Who plays the Riddler. Mm-hmm. He was Belle in the, uh, or I think maybe it was pronounced Belle in this original series episode called Let That Be Your Last Battlefield, one of the best episodes in all of star trek actually is that wait is that from the original star trek or the the yeah yeah yeah. these are they were both in the original series oh that makes sense all right well here it comes ah oh no we've just entered another star trek connection ah (laughs) well done you knocked it out of the park already (laughs) thanks thanks and actually you know if we had done the um tv show we would have been here all day because there's like a dozen or so people from the uh tv show that were involved in star trek i believe at it. one point or another mm-hmm. but uh anyways going through uh obviously we've got alan napier as alfred uh burgess meredith as the penguin mm-hmm. caesar romero obviously the the joker I, th- I think a lot of people know that man uh, i never noticed it as a kid that he his mustache right. he never shaved it right right so yeah. like they just like put the makeup over the mustache. <laughs> that's uh that's um, like a precursor to the whole um superman mustache conflict back in the justice league oh. days remember that so so are you saying that maybe uh this is a, a tie-in maybe they tied in to the original Batman 66. Oh, they did it uh, on purpose? Oh, no. I just is, think uh, <laughs> DC properties just have bad luck occasionally, and that's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chris Perry pointed out, uh, he's well, he said that Eartha Kitt in the comments is the best Catwoman. She's uh, Catwoman in the uh, series. TV series. Yep. Mm-hmm. And this movie actually came out in between seasons one and two during the summer mm-hmm. uh, is when it was released. Yep. And I get, I guess... You know, the regular Catwoman wasn't available. I, I, maybe Catwoman was introduced in season two now that I think about it. But um, anyways, Chief O'Hara by Stafford Rep. Uh, you know, and there's a character who I didn't catch who this was. Uh, they're not important. Quetch. Quetch? Q-U-E-T-C-H. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, well, it was funny. When I was reading through this, I was like, Bluebeard? Morgan? Who the heck is that? And then I realized it's just, uh, it's. I imagine Quetch is probably one of their henchmen. Or maybe the um, that admiral or the, the colonel, whatever his name was, that they kidnapped. Oh, no, that's Commodore Schmid, Schmidlap. Oh, that's right. Schmid- <laughs> <laughs> just saying that is ridiculous. And like, his name. And then they did another one, another name here uh, for another sort of military guy. Vice Admiral Fang Schleicher. Like, I can't even say it. I was like, what is it with military and them having like these g- almost Germanish last names or just. Re- I don't get it. I don't know. And he's the guy that sold the uh, the boat to the penguin, right? <laughs> but they didn't get like a return address. Like Hello? That- <laughs> Vice Admiral? Did they leave a forwarding address? Oh, no. Just Bat- a uh, PO box, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Batman. No, yeah, that was. Uh, 
Thank do you, you want it? Yeah. What I love is like <laughs> your uh, the tone in your voice denotes something of like the dialogue. Oh man, we could spend all day talking about yeah. the dialogue. Anyway, like Batman is so infuriated during uh, that scene when he mm-hmm. finds out that the Admiral just sold the Penguin a boat, and the Penguin's pseudonym was P. Enguin. <laughs> that, that he used to buy the boat. Give me another tab uh, of acid, man. <laughs> yeah, and I'm saying it's a boat. They call it a pre-atomic submarine. Yeah, yeah, that's what they yeah. call it. So it's a submarine, and I love that the jo- that the penguin once he gets the submarine, he went through the trouble of having it painted oh, to look like a penguin. You got to, man. You know, you gotta. <laughs> that's the super villain and, and way. He, and then he added to the end of the boat little like flippers, like penguin feet mm-hmm. flippers that actually work and. uh you know, I was pretty impressed with the production that they went so far as to actually have those be motorized and working. Well, um, um, that since you're talking about it, um, a lot of the the sets were from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, and they were just repurposed makes sense. for this. Yeah, I, I saw that in the um, on the IMDb. Uh, yeah, that makes sense, and and I, and I didn't really look, look into the. Um, the IMDb stuff too much mm. this time, but uh, cause I just I, I don't want the magic ruined, I guess, <laughs> or, uh, or I ran out of time. But um, that makes sense because I, I did see that the movie had like a three million dollar budget or something, mm. which, uh, you know, it's the 1960s. Sure. And if you think about it, they already had like a lot of the sets that they used from the TV show as well. I <laughs> mean, the sets that they used over and over and over again in this movie. <laughs> y- y- yes. Yes. So, I mean, because when you wa- watch it, I was I was I was like. Man, they really like built this Batcopter, right? Like, I mean, I mean, I, I, well, they modified like a re- regular helicopter. But. I was getting vibes of the um, I can't remember what I guess it was the the seventy seven Captain America movie where it was obvious that you know they made these vehicles and then wrote a movie around them, <laughs> basically. Right, right. Yeah, but I mean, they're pretty well done. The the Bat vehicles oh the they movie. look great um, oh i have no complaints i love them yeah. as a kid i love them now especially the bat boat yeah. it looks awesome and uh you know it's not like they just uh painted the uh a, a helicopter and threw like a bat logo on it like they made those wings mm-hmm. that stick to the side of it and you can't just like slap something on a helicopter and then be like okay because they actually really fly this helicopter um so you know they had they probably had to get somebody that is some kind of aero engineer mm-hmm. to like help with making this and it's just like crazy yeah that it, they went through that trouble it is crazy oh yeah back to that uh weird uh opening message when they said that the um that the movies for the the dreamers or whatever for some reason it, i got like naked gun vibes from that or something i don't yes. know that they were like making an excuse for the whole movie or something <laughs> in right some way. So, so for those who haven't seen the movie it opens with like just uh, like a spotlight kind of a thing, like highlighting words written on a on a brick wall, and it just keeps going from wall to wall. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's it's really long, and it talks about how the movie is dedicated to like lovers of absurdity. Um, do you remember what else it like? Uh, lovers of airplanes. Oh God, uh, I know. Or whatever that's flying uh, <laughs> in your house. I hope it's a UFO that's gonna abduct me. <laughs> it might be the bat cop. Yes, so uh, I'm. I'm down. <laughs> Here, let me go join the other bikini-clad women on top of the building, and we'll try to wave to the to the bat copter. Uh, yeah, so Steve, I, I know we're like can't cover everything that happens in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause it's so much that happens. Like we kind of set off air, like it feels like five episodes sure. thrown together, mm-hmm. but can we just take a moment to discuss the various bat copter scenes? Uh, like you said, well, like, go ahead. Like with the thing that they fly over those women. Right. Right. Well, when they, the whole film open, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they were like padding the running time back then or something, but they really probably could have just cut straight to like Batman and Robin getting out of the Batmobile and getting into the Batcopter or even being already being in there, like to go on their um, mission or whatever it was. But instead, we're true. We have to see like the whole thing of like, you know, Bruce and Dick, you know, going into the Bat cave, getting into the Batmobile, uh, you know, getting into their things and then driving all the way to the Batcopter. But anyway, so yeah, then once they get into the bat copter, basically, I guess they really want to remind us that 
America loves Batman and Robin, at least in this world. <laughs> and uh, so you have all these like random uh, Joes looking up and it's like, I'm sure glad they're on our side, Johnny. Uh, and for some reason, <laughs> they fly over a, a building. I think it might have even been a helicopter pad on top. And it's just uh, filled with bikini clad, I assume they're teens or women, bikini clad women. And they're all just yeah. waving up to Batman and Robin. And I don't know. I just wonder if like if the dudes, if that was like for the dudes in the crowd, so they could just be like, oh, bro, I sure wish I was Batman so I could ride around in my helicopter and look at bikini clad <laughs> women, bro. From hundreds of feet away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, did you notice, though, that on that building with those bikini clad women, there's like, uh, because I, w- I was like, what is happening in this scene? So I, I rewound it because, you know, I just had to look at those ladies. Right, of course. But, uh, but uh, there's a guy on the roof with them. And he's like wearing them. like a mm-hmm. s- spandex outfit. So I think they're supposed to be like working out. And he's like the fitness instructor because he's like yelling at them to kind of move back to wherever they were at oh. before. So <laughs> pay attention to so me. That's, I'm your yoga instructor, damn it. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So, Namaste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Real weird, uh, yeah. and obviously that ends up leading into uh, one of the most infamous scenes from the movie, right. which is Batman. Uh, g- you know, he like has like a rope ladder. He's going down into the sea. Wait, let's let's back a up a shark- little bit. They're going okay. after this uh, ship. Uh, I don't even remember. Right. There was some sort of distress call from it. Like, why can't the Coast Guard get it? I don't know. Uh, But anyway, (laughs) Batman and Robin are closing in. Batman is on the Bat Ladder, which looks just like a regular Home Depot ladder or rope ladder. Uh, But it's the Bat Ladder because it's clearly labeled, just like everything in this movie. Everything is labeled in this movie. And just as Robin is lowering him on this uh, ship, uh, it disappears. Whoa, mind blown. And... uh, Batman gets lowered into, <laughs> into the ocean <laughs> where there just happens to be a shark that gets on his leg. And then you get to see Batman punch a shark several times. Uh, and, yeah. and then he asks, and then that cla- the classic line is said, like, screw Rosebud, screw, you know, frankly, Scarlet, I don't give a damn. He asks for the shark repellent bat spray. <laughs> <laughs> and then they they are, and then we're back in the cockpit with uh, Robin, and Robin looks over, and it's labeled oceanic repellents. And I never I didn't remember this. They have more than one repellent. Yes, not just yes. one for sharks, but one for like manta rays. And uh-huh. do you remember the other one? I don't like, even... like I think there was one for like whales or some kind of whale. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there were like several like shark repellents, uh, or, or excuse me, uh, aquatic life repellents, whatever they were called. Right, but, right. And yeah, and okay, so uh, Robin, I guess, puts it on auto- autopilot. He um, descends, I guess, right? Yeah. He, just, he just starts climbing down, <laughs> he descends the ladder. Um, he hang drops from one of the rungs of the ladder. He gives Batman the repellent and he sprays it. And, you know, and just as insane as this scene is, <laughs> it gets even more insane as the shark plummets and hits the water. It explodes. <laughs> <laughs> it's- like this scene made make Shark Sharknado look like it's plausible. Right, right, <laughs> right. And yeah, it's. Uh, and basically, there's like three, four like classic scenes that will forever be remembered. I know that probably gives yeah. away my verdict, but whatever, I don't care. Um, so you got this one, and then later we. F- and by the way, one, one thing about the shark thing, like the whole time that Batman, because the scene is really long, <laughs> yeah. like. It, I, wouldn't you say it's like what, like five, six minutes, which is pretty long for you know just basically Batman has a shark, yeah, for a man his beating up a, entire pu- time. a puppet, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and Robin climbs down the ladder so slowly, <laughs> as if though he wants Batman to be murdered <laughs> so that he can like take over, you know. But yeah, there's a few other helicopter ones. My, my, I, I think though, as good as that scene is. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my other really, really uh, favorite ones is when the helicopter towards the end of the movie is going to crash. Mm-hmm. 
Oh. And it crashes it crash lands at the foam rubber <laughs> wholesale convention <laughs> and you know so it, it ends up crashing on this big foam padding mm -hmm. and you know it's the uh, foam rubber wholesale convention because there's a giant sign that says it <laughs> right and that it. just you know begs the question like you know when they were coming up with this stuff was it they, were they just like oh only kids are going to be watching this. Kids are stupid. But from what I understand, like Batman was a huge hit when it came out. Like right. not just with kids, but with everyone. So, yeah. I mean, is it just like, you know, hey, it's the 60s and we can get away with this shit? Like it's, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, as I just, as a writer myself, it, I'm just very curious of the thought process or maybe that just the producers were like, Eh, who cares? Just just put some words on the paper and they'll make it work. They'll make it work. I, I you know, I think they just like must have just really the, the, the main writer Lorenzo uh, Lamas. I almost said Lorenzo Lamas. <laughs> <laughs> the renegade yes. uh, wrote this movie. Oh, man. But uh, man, that's something we should cover one day. The Hell, freaking absolutely. renegade. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to put that on the list. Yeah. But anyways, uh, you know, I think it, it must be something where like, okay. The comics are, you know, obviously of that time and they're a little bit more goofy mm -hmm. and campy and they like really just, I guess, leaned into it because everything is labeled every on the show. It's like that, too. Like everything is labeled. Right, of course, there's actually a Twitter account called Batman labels uh -huh. that every day they just tweet out, tweet out screenshots oh, of like wow, that's different funny. labels. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. I noticed you great. tagged them in one of the, the tweets. And yeah. And that's what I'd say is um, kind of one of my sort of eh, bad negatives and it's really not the show's fault but it's just like this was the public's perception of like comic books it was basically ruined for decades from the popularity of this show and that's why even today comics will always be considered for kids because of this show <laughs> basically um but uh but you know the movie itself like it has some stuff that's uh more adult than you would expect like basically there's a scene with batman and like like batman wants to just like fuck uh catwoman <laughs> yeah. kit kat right like of course I mean, he asked like if he can go back to her place mm. <laughs> uh and this is just after he finished like closing his eyes and telling her that he's basically fantasizing about having sex with oh, her. oh it was so and, great all the dialogue and, in that it was so crazy yeah and she's like Oh yeah, keep your eyes closed. Keep, keep fantasizing. And doesn't he even say like something about being at the climax or like close to the? And she's like, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> something along those <laughs> and, lines. And Robin and Alfred are in the Batmobile, uh, watching uh, via like some remote TV thing. And he, Bat Robin's like, I don't think uh, I should be watching this. Right. And he turns it off, and that's when he gets kidnapped. But uh, how stupid does Alfred look when he wears that mask sitting in the Batmobile? With his glasses t over the, uh, yeah, the mask. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like, <laughs> I'm like, anyone could have figured out who that was. <laughs> like, yeah. It's so, so, so funny. And you could say the same thing about Robin, too, though. I mean, oh, and Catwoman. Mask is like, sure, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, like Batman, you know, he's just a f mouth or whatever. But yeah, everyone else, like, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. And, you know, speaking of the... Uh, speaking of the mask, sorry to cut you mm -hmm. off, but uh, I don't want to forget about this. Towards the end of the movie, for some reason, the Joker puts on a mask which is the most ridiculous thing because it's it's like a thin mask like robin wears right so but you know his whole face is like still white and his hair's green like who who are you fooling here joker right yeah there was a um point at the at the very beginning when they were all wearing masks um for like i was like yeah that's uh pretty dumb i mean the riddler you know he has his mask the Joker never wears one, but I, I don't know. I have a feeling like it was someone's first day on set and they were like, oh, why don't you guys all wear masks? That'll make sense. But um, yeah. another, but, uh, you know, oh, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say the, the, sorry, just one last thing about, you know, it being this movie being for kids versus being for sure. adults. Like there's lots of things though that scream. It's made, this movie's made for kids, mm -hmm. but then there's other things that are like, oh, this is kind of adult. Like Batman at one point, says uh of whoever had kidnapped or he thinks has kidnapped kit kat because mm -hmm. batman doesn't know that miss kit kat is catwoman right. and she's like seducing him <laughs> right and he says i will bash him brutally uh at another point he says uh once uh batman once as bruce wayne he's been kidnapped he tells the villains i will kill you all yeah with you 
limb from limb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got that. And then also, and this is, um, you know, I, we talked about earlier that this was, we felt like it was a uh, basically an extended episode, but there are a few things that elevate it. I mean, number one, you got the stakes where the whole world yeah. is uh, basically at uh, at risk here um, from the, the deep... <clears throat> From the dehydrating of, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that sigh was because a loud car went by or just the sigh at, at being a nearly forty-year-old man having to say this. It was both. I mean, I, I, I'll <laughs> talk about Batman sixty-six any day, but uh, no, it's uh, living in a city with people with poor vehicles. But anyway, um, they, uh, uh, yeah. So the whole world is at risk, and then also, uh, you know, Batman essentially ends up getting his heart broken uh by the end of this uh yeah. because he when he discovers spoiler alert when he discovers that miss kitka is also a uh, cat <laughs> He very dramatically like gazes almost like right at the camera and then the, the music yeah. plays from the weird Russian club that they went to. Like Yeah, and it was like a Russian version of Fool's Russian. Yeah, I think. yeah, I think it was. <laughs> and then why were they eating on the ground? Like that's like an Asian or sitting on the ground, you know, on those that's like more of a like a Japanese thing. Um, oh, uh dinner tables weren't invented till the seventies, Steve. Ah, I see. Uh, in, in Russia, yes. Yeah. Ah, in Russia, yes. table eat you. Uh, I see. I see how it goes. <laughs> um uh so yeah, I mean I, I would say that they at least tried uh in that regard, but I don't know. I feel like from the beginning to the very end, it's just like, eh, stuff happens. Like there's like not really a character arc. There's no hero's journey or anything. You just sort of yeah, have to I guess you could, sit back and go with if, it. I guess you could argue that Bruce Wayne has a bit of a character arc, you know, because right. he like falls in love with Absolutely. this kid Ken and his heart is broken. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, you know, Steve, you you mentioned the dehydrator. I think you should probably kind of explain what that is for, you know, listeners who haven't <laughs> sure. experienced this To you, film. Generation Y people listening, and I hope you are. Uh, no, the, um, the dehyd... So they basically kidnap the, the United Underworld of Villains, uh, kidnap this... Uh, I guess he's like a rich British inventor who's also really into, like, nautical stuff, this... Commodore uh -huh. Schmidlap, um, they um, kidnap him so they can get his invention, which basically has the ability to remove all the moisture from from anything. And uh, you see them, they test it at first, and by them I mean a penguin. He brings in <laughs> some of his random uh, pirate thugs and uh, he shoots them. Oh, but Steve, they're not random because he calls them guinea pigs. Oh. <laughs> they walk in with shirts that say GP1, GP2. So these were specifically hand-picked right. uh, goons, sir. Please, please. Steve, but they all have respect. mothers. They all have mothers. You're right. Oh, uh, my God. That line is great. Yeah. Uh, you should probably explain where that comes from. Sure, sure. We'll get to that. Uh, but, yeah, so basically uh, he brings in his <laughs> hand-picked guinea pigs and shoots them with the dehydrator and all that's left of them is uh basically dust or yeah, like molecules. Little piles of dust. Yeah, yeah. That's um and then all the water goes into the dehydrator. It's this ridiculous looking like ray gun type thing. Um so they then very carefully um or well, for some, since Catwoman is a woman, <laughs> Penguin goes, Get the dustpan, Catwoman. And so she goes and gets this tiny dustpan and a brush and slowly like you know, basically sweeps up these um, villains. And as he's doing so, Penguin, and apparently this is an ad lib line, he goes, Careful, Catwoman. Every one of them has a mother. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so weird, so random, but yeah. but at the same time, just genius. Like, the dude, perfect line. Like, I belly laugh every time uh, I hear that line. Oh, absolutely. Like, the stuff that really um, makes me laugh. Uh, the and I have it like written down here in case I forget, but I won't. Is um when uh, Batman and Robin and the Commissioner and the Chief are trying to figure things out, and there are ridiculous <laughs> lines of logic that they use to like figure it out. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, basically they're they're usually trying to figure out the uh, the riddles that the Riddler puts mm -hmm. out, and um, uh, I wrote down all of the uh, let's see here like there was one where it was just like uh, i 
didn't write it down. I can't find it. Computer's messing up. I remember like one was like, what do you call a a turkey that flies upside down? Yeah, something or like that. Or what does a turkey that flies upside down mm. do? And the answer was gobble up. Right, <laughs> yeah. And then there was an additional, like, I guess, joke or riddle that went with it. And then um, Robin gets it and Batman goes, precisely, Robin. It's the only possible answer like right basically everything batman and robin quote unquote figure out in this mm. movie is the result of them jumping to a giant <laughs> fucking conclusion <laughs> oh yeah absolutely um, and, and they get like more ridiculous as the movie goes on like uh one of the first ones is like how they figure out that the villains um how it's Catwoman, joker riddler and penguin they solve a bunch of kind of clues not mm-hmm. even uh, yeah, clues, not riddles. And at one point, like Robin says, oh, and that shark was out by the sea. Sea for Catwoman. Oh, what? God, yeah, <laughs> what? That was so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, this also uh, makes uh, me remember the the press conference that Batman was holding mm. where and everyone and one of the reporters was like, well, hey, that Batsy, how about that exploding, exploding shark? And he's like, don't worry about that exploding shark. <laughs> like, and he basically just dodged like all their questions and didn't answer anything. Oh, he straight up lied, Steve. He <laughs> says that the, the shark had just happened to swallow a floating landmine and that it's nothing to, to worry, worry about. about. Yeah, a yeah. floating mine. Why are there floating mines randomly? <laughs> out and, and, that, about? and that brings up, okay, back, um, and this kind of steers us back to the, to the classic scenes in this movie. So we already mentioned one, yes. the shark repellent bat spray. And then I would say this is sort of an accompaniment to that, and that is when they go to the buoy to uh, inspect it. They find the, mm. the magical projector. <laughs> Penguin turns on the, this magnet on the buoy, and their utility belts get stuck to it. I also love yeah. how Batman basically narrates what's going on, so the stupidest person watching can get it. <laughs> it's like, clearly you can see what's going on. He's just like... Our utility belts, the magnet, it's attracting like all the little pointy things in there or something. And yeah, it's, it, he specifically says that the magnet is attracting all of the metal right, right, uh, exactly. components of their utility and belt. And then, of course, Robin follows that up with a holy something or other, <laughs> which yeah. when I first heard those, like I was like, oh, that's so cute. But then after like the 20th one, I'm like, God, kill me. Um, but anyway, so this missile, and I remember this scene used to... Oof, I used to, I would be like, oh my God, Batman's going to die. Um, the missile <laughs> is coming towards them. And, you know, he tries to jam it with the bat missile jammer. Like he stops a few missiles with that. And then he goes, mm-hmm. the batteries are dead. <laughs> it's like, ah, Batman, why didn't you go to Radio Shack ahead of time? Right, uh, right. So anyway, this final missile is coming in. And then you hear an explosion. All of the villains go nuts because they finally killed Batman. They go to inspect the uh, uh, the buoy. Oh, Batman's gone. The buoy's fine. What's going on? And then we cut to Batman and Robin in the uh, the Bat boat, <laughs> and uh, and Batman is just like hmm, that poor noble porpoise. I can't believe he <laughs> sacrificed himself to save us. <laughs> yeah, Robin's like, he jumped in front of the missile just in time or something like that. It's like, so a dolphin loves Batman and Robin so much. This dolphin saw what was going on and said, I have to sacrifice myself well, hey, to save Batman and Robin. If Batman and Robin can stop like a yoga class dead in its tracks, then of course the animal kingdom, especially creatures of the sea, will also want to. Yeah. To lay down their lives for them. Um, Maybe Aquaman uh, sent the dolphin. Oh man, to its I was death. thinking that. Uh, You're reading my mind here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, but oh man, but that scene is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, their explanation for it. like I, I just can't even imagine how many times they had to film some of these. Right. Just, just due to cracking up. Oh, like, I, yeah, that would be awesome to see some uh, outtakes of the show. I'm not sure they exist though. Um, yeah. But but the, but the whole point, I, I guess, like what ends up becoming, because it jumps from like plot, from like villain plot to villain plot to villain plot to villain plot. Mm-hmm. But then the final main one ends up being that uh, Penguin is using this dehydrator to capture like nine of the world's leaders that were meeting at what's basically the UN. Right. Um, and uh, 
<laughs> we don't really know what he's going to do with them. I don't, do they ever no, explain? No, no. Um, he just uh, takes them. Yeah, he never asks for money or anything. Uh, I guess he doesn't really get a chance to. But uh, but there's one more scene before we get to the end. Or actually, I'd say one and a half. There, uh, and we'll get through them quick. There's the scene when they're walking up the wall. You know, that's a uh, oh yeah, that's classic scene's stuff. been parodied many times. Although, for some reason, I. Th- I, like maybe they did it in the show a few more times because I could have sworn it was mm-hmm. much longer. Like they just went up and like one guy like looked up and I rem- <laughs> and I thought it was funny that they kept talking about like alcoholics the whole time while they were going. I have that there. in my notes too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's like a classic scene. And then yeah, the the comments about the alcoholics are uh, hilarious. And oh, and by the way, the the flight's running a little late, Steve. So I got a little. Bit oh, great, time, but, great, fantastic. Um, the, the flight uh i'm not the flight but the uh, they talk about alcoholics like mm-hmm. basically being like the most e- drinking is the most evil thing in the world robin at one point says i would rather be dead than <laughs> uh than not be able to trust what my eyes see referring to right. like someone that's drunk right right uh he also at one point batman which i know you're gonna get to the scene with the bomb sure uh, sure, sure but uh you know one of the things that batman does by taking this bomb out of there is that he saves like all these alcohol all these people drinking at the bar basically and robin later is like i can't believe that you risked your life to save those alcoholics those wow. drinkers and, and so like robin just wanted them to die i guess and then batman says yes they are drinkers but they are also humans right. and then he goes on the speech about how like you know they might be able to be salvaged that's funny because like from what i understand people drank drank way more back in the 50s and right. 60s than they do now and i don't know i guess they must have had like i don't know parents groups leaning on them or something oh we want batman to be a good example and so- i i could have sworn that when adam west and uh Miss Kit Kat are at the their dinner date mm. that they had wine or something too. So <laughs> oh no, that was just uh, grape juice. No, <laughs> no. bat wine. It's different. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's uh, bat juice. Yeah, is what he was trying to give her. If you know what no, I'm saying. No, uh, better the Ooh, bat wow. juice than the bat gas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which they talk so, about. So sorry, anyways, you were going over the scenes. Yeah, uh, I mean, well, you already mentioned the uh, the bomb. Uh, you can't. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Basically. Uh, the I guess a lot of the plot is something happens to Batman and Robin, then they have to go back and investigate. So they go back to the area where Bruce Wayne was kidnapped, where he uh, very uh, graphically said he was going to wring them limb from limb and kill them all. Like, whew, I'm still clutching my pearls after that scene. Um, <laughs> they said he was going to drink their blood. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to eat your babies. Um, but uh, yeah, it was very <laughs> odd choices. Um, but anyway, they go back. Batman finds this uh, this bomb, and it seems like no matter where he goes uh, to try to get rid of it, um, there's always somebody there. And oh man, I feel like no, no, I'm sure that was there. I, so, and, and the bomb is like a cartoony, like sure. big black ball with like. Um, it, it almost used like a flare or yeah, something. Yeah, it looked like but there's straight like, out of Inspector Gadget. Uh, yeah, there's like a small like flame constantly shooting out right. of it. And he like runs around with the bomb holding it like a freaking cartoon character all over this like the docks, I guess, or whatever it is. Yeah, you missed a, uh, <laughs> well, let's just say a, cancel- a cancelable moment or when he runs out of the bar, I guess it's also a restaurant. And all the patrons like run away except for two rather large like twin sisters who just sit there eating because it's more important for them to eat than it is to save their lives. Right, right, That's right, the right. Joke. Yeah, these. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, these larger women. But but you know there was no reason for like those people to leave the bar because it's Batman. I don't was know why Batman leave. told you. They should have just sat yeah, there and continued getting drunk. That's how we did it at so, Peabody's uh, back in the day, yeah. right, bruh? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I did it last night. I. Uh, I am hungover today. Um, but uh, yeah, he like, it's so funny. Like you said, he like running around like this, these, this docks or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what you call like where he's at, but uh, he runs Pier, into like nuns first. Know. Then yeah. he like turns around and he like runs into like a lady with a baby stroller. Right. Uh, little, then he like runs ducks, a little bit. Uh, ducklings yeah, out yeah. in the water. 
And then, yeah, so he can't throw the bomb there. He runs into the... some marching band, mm -hmm. a three person marching band. <laughs> well, that band. marching, he kept running into that marching band. Yeah. Uh, well, he runs into the nuns and the, and the baby again, too, later on mm -hmm. when he's on his, when he's doubling back. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, though, my favorite one, though, just because I, I didn't expect it. And I didn't even remember, even though I've seen the movie like a dozen times, mm -hmm. is when he's trying to find, you know, throw it out at sea off the dock or whatever, and a guy comes up at the last second off a ladder <laughs> from, the, from the bottom of the dock, and he's like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, and he's that like, oh, right, yeah. Oh. They used to crack me up, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's he, He's like, some days you can't get rid of a bomb. And yeah, and that is a classic line in American cinema. I don't care where you're from or how many Stanley Kubrick movies you've watched, it's still a classic line. Um, and then they just randomly run into the penguin disguised as Commodore Schmidlap. Um, and I mean, and they ba basically, this all heads towards the uh, final showdown on the submarine. There's like a battle between the bat boat and, and the penguin submarine. Um, yeah. They bring out that really cool uh, bat gun. I can't. Let's see if uh, I think I wrote down what they call it. Um, it actually looked like a toy they used to have um, that came out with the uh, the Batman '89 stuff. Do you remember? Did you ever mm -hmm. have any of those toys? The ba Batman '89. I don't 89? think I did. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think I did. Um, oh well. I mean, it's not really important. But <clears throat> um, oh, Steve. Uh, w w one thing that I, I think is worth mentioning is that you know the goons that the joke that the penguin had like dehydrated. Mm -hmm. He dr he. His whole plan is to have Batman take him to the Batcave. Right. So that's why he disguised himself as like the Commodore. Mm -hmm. So Batman takes him to the Batcave to like run some tests to prove whether or not it's the Penguin or not. And you know he's got like those guys like the the dust. The, the, they put them in uh, their dust in tubes. Right. And then Batman has like this because everything is labeled, of course, as sure, we mentioned. Sure. So. He suddenly, and there's always these highly specific machines and and equipment in the in the bat mo cave. But uh, one of them is like, just says like drink dispense drinking water dispenser or something well, like I that. I thought it was just like water dispenser. It wasn't water dispenser. Even, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why couldn't it just be a yeah. water fountain? <laughs> like, yeah, because it was like heavy water that they used right. to refuel the atomic something in their Batmobile. Anyways, so. While Batman and Robin aren't looking, basically Joker uses this to rehydrate his goons. Right. So now they're in the Batcave, which honestly, it's kind of a brilliant plan. Uh, sure. Get captured by Batman, but you you get into the Batcave and you have a bunch of goons there. It's actually a good plan. He just didn't use because, the right water. Yeah, yeah, because they used heavy water and Penguin <laughs> didn't know that it was heavy water. Um, the moment these guys get touched by Batman, they disappear right. and they die. And like Robin's like, they're not coming back. And Batman's like, no, 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 they're, they're gone forever. Yeah, that's another, <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how you know this is a movie for the cinema and not for the TV. Yeah. Cause people actually yeah. die. Just like Optimus yeah, Prime yeah. died in the Transformers so, movie. So Steve, does that mean that Batman and Robin killed four people? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was more than four. Well, I guess Penguin killed well, his well, own Penguin guy. Well, Penguin kills one of them mm -hmm. by accident, but uh, right? Wow. I mean, yeah, there. Well, there you go. Everyone wanted to see Batman kill some guys. He already yeah. did, like forty years ago. <laughs> yeah, and brushed it off like it was nothing. Yep. It was like, sorry, old chum, they're not coming back. Uh, My apologies to your mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that should be. Uh, that sounds like an Adult Swim sketch, or what was that show? Yeah. Um, Robot Chicken. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, anyway, anyway, sorry. You you're going on to the final fight, uh, the submarine. I yeah, think. basically, um, we're we go back out to sea. I don't know why they decided to like have so much nautical stuff involved with this movie, especially since, you know, Batman is kind of known as a urban, like, fighter or yeah. Avenger, but it must have had to do something with budgets, I'd imagine. Um, but I don't know, Steve, because, like, even when this last scene, when they go, because before they get there, they have to debut yet another vehicle, the Bat <laughs> cycle? Uh, motorcycle, yeah. Bat cycle, thank you. Mm -hmm. And like it's got like a little side cart for Robin, <laughs> which ruins and, it. And, yeah, <laughs> right, right. It makes it look real stupid. Mm -hmm. But uh, I will say like Batman's counter plan to is great too, where he like basically plans on having the Penguin steal their Batmobile so that they can use that to track them to their hideout. That's how they find out where they're at. But right. the Bat Cycle thing is hilarious because 
they they ride the motorcycles to the um to where the hell bat copter is and as they're getting there they're they're, all, they're like 30 feet away from the freaking bat copter and batman goes disengage uh engage go kart and like yeah the sidecar robin like part of it comes out and it's like a go kart mm. <laughs> that only it only traveled like 30 feet or something but they just wanted <laughs> like, to why? show that it could do it that's all Right, like, right, that was exactly. The only like, we built this. Um, yeah, we built this. We're gonna use it. Right, uh, and we're like, sorry. I just didn't want us to like miss the. Best. Oh no problem, and that brings to mind another sort of <laughs> somewhat memorable scene where the Riddler accidentally shoots down the back copter because, like, he all right. So he keeps shooting off these missiles that keep writing um, riddles in the sky because uh-huh. that's what he does. And when he finally shoots one off for the third or fourth time, the missile goes up and hits the back copter, and that's what that's what ends up making the back copter uh, land on the um, what was it a convention Quote unquote, for crash land? Yeah, crash land on the it, convention the, for used foam the or foam what? rubber foam rubber <laughs> wholesale convention. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to go to foam rubber con 2022. Yeah. It's gonna be off the foam chain, con, yes. bro. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean that's just just a weird coincidence, and of course they were all. Cr- we also didn't mention the uh, jetpack umbrellas. Uh, oh yes, <laughs> and that was a funny scene because like when because all right, um, so Bruce Wayne and Kitka are on the date, and then just out of nowhere, Penguin is like scramble the the jetpack umbrellas and i mean i was just like what but i remembered it when he said it i I mean it doesn't make any sense but i was like i remember those and then they go and uh basically kidnap um bruce and uh, kitka when stupid robin is too prudish to watch him make out yeah (laughs) what a lame am i right Uh, let's face it robin is in love with batman and he just it would be too emotionally painful well i mean according uh, to dc comics he is bi so well i don't i don't know if they're talking about dick grayson but one of the robins is i mean there's one of the the current robin oh is it damien the his i think or is there know. a guy after but, uh, that? Well, it's not important. But anyway. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But I do want to put out, so for anyone who hasn't seen the movie, the, these umbrellas, they ride them like the way a witch would ride a broom, yeah. basically. <laughs> but they're giant umbrellas, maybe like 15 feet long yeah, or something. Yeah, and they've got a little joystick in the front. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's how they control them. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfectly aerodynamic. Don't ask questions. How dare you? Yeah. Um, all right. All right. But, but, but anyways, the, 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 they're at the submarine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fighting but uh, uh right oh i mean do we need to move it along because i just i, I want to say real quick that i think it's funny that um after they crash land and they have to get to the uh, to where the un is basically instead of taking a cab or commandeering like a citizen's <laughs> car they batman says we're in tip-top uh, condition he robin. says like at this time of the day no we're not going to commandeer a taxi because right. robin suggests it. i mean are they sure they don't live in la i mean i could believe that there <laughs> but um but yeah so basically they run you know risking the possibility that the you know the villains could possibly win but no instead of going up against traffic it's better that they run i just i'm like yeah they batman says uh this time of day, it would take long, too long if we got a cab. And uh, they, then he says, luckily, Robin, we're in tip-top condition. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they start to um, do a light jog. Right. Uh, <laughs> right, right. And they make it there, but they're too late. Um, so anyway, that leads us to the final confrontation between the bat boat and the penguin mer- submarine. Like, they really need to come up with a better name for it than that. Um they have this like wacky or really cool looking gun on the bat boat. They use it to force the submarine to surface. And then we're finally yep. treated to, and this is this is uh, sort of my complaints for this movie. Like I love the narrator in the regular show. And he's only used very briefly at the beginning of this movie. And then they also, um, despite all the many uh, copious fight scenes that happen throughout this movie, <coughs> They don't have the uh, <coughs> shoot. The, you okay, Steve? Uh, yeah, I drank. Too. Did, you, did you did you get some bat bat gas? Uh, <laughs> gas. <coughs> um, but they um they didn't have the onomatopoeia show up until the very end, and I'm just like, 
I wonder why they chose that. Like, okay, I could understand. Maybe they wanted to show some restraint for once. But then how many times? Steve, did- Steve, Steve this, the, are you telling me that the movie with shark repellent for the opening scene <laughs> where a shark is getting punched, are you telling me that they wanted to show restraint, Steve? I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Like, but yeah, I mean, so it doesn't make sense, especially when like every other word out of Robin is holy this and holy that. It's like, who came up with that too? Who thought that would be a good idea? But, but uh, anyway, so we finally get a, a fight scene on the submarine, um, beautifully choreographed. And I say that with uh, quotation fingers. Um, uh, and of course, like, that's when we get to Batman and Robin basically throw all the guys in the ocean. They get up to get Catwoman, who was pushing everybody off. And that's when um, Batman tackles, or no, he doesn't tackle her. He chases her into the submarine, which makes no sense. Like, where are you going to go if you run into the submarine, Catwoman? And she trips, her mask falls off, and that's when he realizes that she was Kitka all along. And he looks... <laughs> looks at the camera and you can see his mighty heart breaking uh and he he delivers some classic bat lines to uh to robin and um and then they find the the vials that have the uh, the un ambassadors in it and uh, batman picks it up and then uh oh here comes commodore schmidlap He's uh, and Batman makes a big deal about how you know the vials almost fell over. Sure, and, and, and he grabs it like very. Actually, Batman like lunges at them. It's very <laughs> weird. In fact, like throughout the whole battle between the Bat Boat and the submarine, they kept showing the vials like mm-hmm. almost falling down, which is pretty good. Yeah, teetering back and forth. Decent yeah, intensity. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, but yeah, here comes Commodore Schmidlap. He's complaining about stuff. He trips, falls into Batman, knocks. <laughs> The vials onto the table <laughs> that proceeds to comically sneeze on them. Uh, so now the nine world leaders, all of their dust particles have been intermixed mm-hmm. with each other and, 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 and they're everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, um, only Batman and Robin can uh, use their various uh, scientific machines from the Batcave to separate all the molecules of of course they they, thankfully have a very a highly specific machine for this the super molecule molecule separator separator. yep clearly marked clearly marked in case you were confused clearly labeled yeah yeah Uh, yeah you don't want to confuse that with the uh, heavy water dispenser (laughs) (laughs) so i mean it's funny because this is when it shows just how easy life is for batman and robin because like i mean they try to build it up like i guess but then they just hit one button, bam, molecules separated, no problem. Yeah. And they come. And by the way, Steve, uh, we, we got to talk about their outfits during the scene because they're wearing their Batman and Robin tights, their costumes, but over it, they have like these weird white lab coats. And like, uh, isn't Batman's like tucked in, like his utility belt is over the coat, the lab coat? So he's wearing his utility belt is the first layer. Second layer is the white lab coat. And then the third uh, layer is his bat costume. Even stranger than that, you hell. Why are they wearing like their full like get ups inside the bat cave where no one is? I don't know. I, I guess maybe they just got there. I mean, but you know, that could... doesn't make sense because there was like uh, they were talking to Commissioner Gordon. He had like reporters there and a TV crew. Um, and that's <laughs> The Commissioner Gordon is using the red phone to talk to Batman. <laughs> to talk uh, to the know, president. To get it, yeah, to, to, to talk to Batman about, you know, what's going on with the separation of the, the, the dirt on these, uh, the dust of the leaders. And then on the other line, on literally another phone in his other hand is the president, which I guess was supposed to be uh, Kennedy, right? Uh, well, on the IMDb, they said uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson. Oh, Lyndon B. Johnson. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, LBJ. yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what the dogs were were supposed to. Uh, it was a uh, I don't know. I always found I don't know why, but the scenes with Commissioner Gordon were so funny. I remember there was a yeah. there was a quick little exchange. I think then, where Batman and Robin were, and they briefly run into him, or was it Bruce Wayne? And he was like, "You better get back to your office, Commissioner." Batman's gonna be calling, and he's like, "Yes, I believe he will." Yeah, yeah. And he just very matter yeah. of fact, it's like. He's like a guy who had like a stroke and 
was just like going with it. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, he just does whatever. Right. I, I guess people just do whatever Bruce Wayne or Batman say. Like at one point, uh, Batman hands Robin a pill in the car. It says, here, take this pill. And Robin just takes it. <laughs> sure. You <laughs> like, should always do no questions. <laughs> what a guy in a bat suit tells you to do. If, if you take away. And, and I get that they trust each other sure, or whatever, sure. but it kind of weird. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, for yeah, sure. so they're, they 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 make it. <laughs> they say like when they're separated, the Commissioner Gordon's like, uh, "Batman, are you sure that do you think you'll be able to separate them? You know, mm -hmm. uh, the different dust for all the night." He's like, uh, "Commissioner, I say this uh, as humbly as <laughs> yeah. possible. If Batman, uh, if myself and Robin can't do it, there's no one else in the world <laughs> that could." <laughs> he, he was You're like scientist. He was like he's. I, I can say this without ego. Like I'm like that's yeah, the yeah, most yeah, egotistical yeah, yeah. thing you possibly could have said. And then what's the commissioner's re reply? No truer statement has ever been of said. Course, it's all about <laughs> reinforcing. Like it's like uh, those movies where. I don't know, someone's in it. It's like a coma fantasy is what it is. It's like mm -hmm. like Bruce Wayne is actually like asleep on a table somewhere. And this is his like coma fantasy where everything works out his way, like no matter what. Yeah. And then it, I'm starting to think that at one point that scene where like Bruce Wayne was, it seems like he's fantasizing about sleeping with uh, Kit Kat. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to think this is the fantasy and we're just like watching it now. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> I think if, if I took some like, some music from like Twin Peaks or any other like David Lynch uh, movies, mm. it would actually really work with this movie uh, quite yeah. well. Um, but anyway, so they go back to the United Nations because, of course, like, you know, you shouldn't go back, you know, to a lab or a hospital yeah. to to reinvigorate these people. Yeah, they, they go. They separated them, obviously. Right, they, right. They, um, they got them. They, did you like how like each person is like a separate the different color of dust yeah <laughs> like their dust is like you know there's like bright pink there's red there's green of course, orange that's it's the many uh, races of the world right there yeah, yeah. Um, in fact in one of the pictures here for those that are watching you can see uh that a picture of penguin and catwoman uh and the vials are in front of catwoman so those are the nine world leaders <laughs> but uh yeah so of course uh, I love it. They just they go into this uh, room, which is really just like the most basic like office room you could possibly. I think maybe they had a flag or two around, but like they didn't spare any expense with this set decoration. Um, <laughs> and Batman is, I guess, checking to make sure all the uh, like the test tubes and whatnot. And I, I just think it's funny because I could just see like the director. He's like okay, just go and like, you know, kind of touch like the thing and make it look like you're checking it out. And it's like, that's basically <laughs> exactly what he does. Is he just goes and touches right, every right, single right. one when really you probably wouldn't want to touch it at all. Um, right. And then of course, like they, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> this was another uh, sort of funny scene. It was like, Robin, begin like uh, rehydration. And all Robin does is like take a hose and jam it into a, a spigot and like twist yeah, it on yeah. like that and it's like it's like you couldn't have done that yourself batman but whatever um and then they turn on the the water and just like magic the world leaders reappear arguing amongst each other just like they were before they yeah. disappeared except now um they are like mixed up like like, like the russian guy has like a french accent <laughs> Uh, or speaking in French, and like the the United Kingdom leader is you know speaking Japanese or whatever. Like they're all mixed up, and like Robin says, uh, and that goes on for a long time. That scene of them just yelling. Oh yeah. And it's literally the camera just keeps cutting to like a different person, and they're just yelling. And Batman uh, and says something like, "This uh, mixing them up like this may be the greatest service." the world has ever been done <laughs> and, I, and i think that's funny because just before that before they uh -huh. did the uh the remixing or the unmixing uh, robin was like gee batman you think the way the world is maybe we should jumble them up a little and batman was like it's not for us humans to dictate what nature does right. or something along those lines and then right. it happens he literally makes a big speech mm -hmm. about how like humans because like robin's like oh maybe we can make them a little nicer basically is what right. robin's trying to imply mm -hmm. and uh yeah batman's like nope we shouldn't do that we're, we're not god right you know 
<laughs> but then, then, then when it happened accidentally, then it was okay. Like, yeah. Oh, I, I, we did a good thing, huh? There you go. <laughs> that, so, like, what is the theme of this movie then? Like, uh... <laughs> oh, wait, wait, Steve. Uh, there is one last thing. I had one last note, sure. which I think is super important. Uh, during the fight scene, Catwoman throws uh, her cat like at Batman, I guess, to attack him. And mm-hmm. Batman starts fighting while holding the cat the whole time, basically for mm-hmm. the second half of the fight. And uh, anyways, Batman eventually, because, uh, you know, this cat's not obviously not an alcoholic, so the life is worth saving of this cat. <laughs> so puts the cat like in a little like life boat, like a floating lifeboat thing and says, Bon voyage, pussy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, and I swear, like the they just got together and did a bunch of acid and wrote a script. Like it's so crazy. Like they definitely did I mean obviously they, they were able to like put that in there because it's a cat, you know, pussy cat, but you know the reason why they had it in there was just to have Batman say Bon Voyage pussy. Right. Well, I mean it's the same as like, you know, uh the various Bond movies and the use of that word. You've got the one octopussy and then there's right uh, that villainous whose name was Pussy Galore. Like <laughs> Right. Man, right back right, in the sixties right. they were just pussy crazy. Um Yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, wow. And so that basically ends uh oh one mm-hmm. one more thing. I find it hil- hilarious. After they brought back the United Nations and I guess uh Robin and Batman had they said what you said, uh this is the greatest thing for all mankind. Now, to mm-hmm. the Batcave, Robin. Let us leave like uh discreetly <laughs> through the window. <laughs> Inconspicuously. That's what it is. Through the window. Meanwhile, what's right behind them, Steve? A fucking door. (laughs) (laughs) What was the point? Like, I just, like, uh, they were like. Through the window with our ropes. I just, like, the director was, I don't, or the writer was just like, all right, Batman and Robin are different than everyone. They can't use a door like a normal guy. They got to go through the window. Yeah, and I just love how um, uh, Robin, he just sort of like, puts his little rope like around the um you know there's like a little handle that makes the window come out it's like something that would easily break off uh basically yeah yeah. uh and And then the the movie ends on an outside shot of batman and robin you know obviously stunt people legitimately rappelling down right like a big skyscraper well there's your Um, yeah there's your answer then they just wanted to show people rappelling i guess right so, but the thing that kills me is then it's as they're rappelling down up on the screen, it says the end, but then it changes to the living end. Yeah, that was like so weird. Mark. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> they were, I don't know. They were just like, had to throw one last like weird LSD fueled fucking thing, you know? <laughs> so what, what's, what's the theme, Steve? I don't know. I, I guess the theme is when we die, are we really dead, or is it the living uh, end? I, I, I don't. I don't know. Like, yeah, like man. The, the theme is drinking is bad. Uh, uh, yes. Bruce Wayne is Says super who? horny. Yeah, <laughs> you uh, got that right. Uh, super super horny. Uh, by the way, Adam West, for whatever reason, I did not remember him being so handsome. Ah. Like he's he was actually a really handsome guy. Yeah, it's a shame. Like. He uh, wasn't able to find much work after this, unless it was playing himself in some sort of like yeah. bizarre parody. Which, uh, <laughs> if you're watching this, there's uh, plenty of shots of him from The Simpsons um, that I put right. up on here. Um, but uh, and they did bring back the 1966 Batman show, uh, you know, a few years ago as like these like animated movies, and they have you, Adam West. Did you watch the- those? Yeah, yeah, oh, I've, I've seen one of them. Yeah, um, it was really good. There's one where for your Star Trek connection. I know. Yeah, I know, yep, sir. Yep, okay, William Shatner. That's the one I saw. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, William Shatner plays uh, Two Face, right? I think that's who yes. it was. Yes, that's right. Yes. For some reason, I don't remember that one. Um, and it's not to say that I didn't watch it. I could have just forgotten, but. Uh, but anyway, um, let's move in to answering the question. Oh, yes. question. All right. Well, this is a pretty obvious answer to this question. But, uh, yeah, hell, 
Should Batman the movie 1966 be remembered until the end of time, or should it be tossed into the pit of obscurity, never to be heard from again? My God, this movie needs to be preserved in a museum. Uh, and uh, much like the Mona Lisa, copious copies need to be made so anyone and everyone can enjoy it at home. It's, you know, the movie's 55 years old, but man, it's fun. It's like, it's a, it, it, I, th- I think, like, like you said, kind of the opening thing about being like Naked Gun, the whole movie kind of has a little bit of that vibe, mm-hmm. that absurd kind of Naked sure. Gun comedy vibe. But uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's not a lot of there's it does feel like a bunch of episodes squished together, sure. like ideas for like different episodes. Maybe it's the better way to sit, put it. But yeah, I, I, I freaking love it. I couldn't agree more. Uh, like it's a it's just like it shows the power of camp and possibly acid, I guess. Just like I mean, even if you like hated everything else, like the dialogue is just so mm-hmm. mind it's mind blowing blowing is what it is like yes just the stuff that they came out with that had that they made adam west say and how he just says it with such authority that you have to go yeah, with it. conviction no matter what yeah. yeah no matter what he says you just have to go with it uh everybody in this movie it, it, it commits oh, to absolutely. their characters Ab- now a question for you oh wait, let me just uh go ahead and play the bumper here oh yes yes very in accordance to obscure to now, the most important streaming YouTube podcast in all of the internet, you shall be remembered. Yes. Good show. Good, good show. So I love that uh, bumper. Uh, thanks. Uh, so I was like thinking to myself, like, is there any other show that reached like this level of camp and was still uh, successful. And the only one I could think of that comes anywhere near it, not saying it ascended to the high platform of Batman 66, is uh, Hercules' The Legendary Journey. Oh, yeah, especially like the later yeah, seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, the later seasons got pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Do we have time for a project report? Uh, yes, if we do a Pretty quick. All right. What on earth have you been working on? It's time for Project Report. All right, man. How's your uh, videos been going? Good, good. Uh, I'm actually, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to continue to render the opening intro for it, which is uh, taking forever because uh, my most complicated 3D scene that I've had to uh, put together. So. But it looks really good. I'm really excited about it. And uh, yeah. Very cool. So, uh, uh, and then once I'm done with that 3D scene, the rest of the editing should go a lot fast. But yeah, I had to like model a bunch of like arcade cabinets. Ooh. And um, cool. yeah, I created like a little, basically, I created like an arcade and uh, it looks uh, pretty nice in there. In your video, is there any discussion of the game NARC? No, but I did make a, a model Ooh, for uh Very cool. I love that so, game. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. I just played it a few weeks ago, actually. They have it at a barcade uh, near me. Oh. Um, well, we'll have, if, assuming our visit is going to go as planned, we have to go there. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I think, because uh, I went there to capture footage for the video just to get like some of the uh, winners don't use drugs like screens and live mm. whatever and I wasn't sure if narc had one or not because it came out before yeah the winners don't use drugs campaign like just before it but it actually this machine had one so I don't know if maybe it was built later and it was reprogrammed into it what who, who, who gives a fuck what are you up to <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just edited or we just shot some more Tim's toy box so if you're into retro toys uh, there'll be more episodes of that coming up soon and I've just got one page left in my uh, in the teaser for my comic. Like the uh, nice, yeah. The colorist has uh, been doing an awesome job, and yeah. Then after that, I guess I'll be in crowdfunding territory, which I find uh, very frightening. But uh, but I'm looking forward to it uh, nonetheless. Um, well, I'm looking forward to it. Uh. <laughs> well, the, the the pages that you showed me, mm-hmm. and they weren't colored yet. They look freaking amazing ah, they thanks, look really man. good yeah like and really good 
I don't know if I told you, but I've also been teaching myself uh, lettering, so I'm uh, going to be my own letterer, it looks like. So, oh, nice. Yeah, that... I, I just assumed you were going to just use a computer to... Uh... Well, yeah, that I am using a computer. I mean, I, oh, I okay. could pay someone. I, I, I thought you were literally going to, like, hand write. <laughs> Have you seen my handwriting, man? It's like oh, I don't know, man. You're like I don't know if like teaching yourself lettering is like teaching yourself calligraphy or something. I don't oh, know. I guess what I I'm teaching myself Illustrator because I've never used it in my entire life. Okay. <laughs> See, look, we have Retro B in the chat. Hey, thanks for joining. Uh, he said, "What is lettering? Lettering <laughs> is see? the bubbles and the the text inside the bubbles for a comic book, and also the sound effects too, like uh, curse sploosh." <laughs> And uh, pow, Zach, Irk, Irk, Zoe, yeah, yeah, there were stuff. Zawack, I think, was another one that they used. Uh, there was a uh, there was, when somebody fell in the water, uh, splash, the submarine fight. No, s sploosh was was one. I was like, oh. That's like, um, what is that show? Um, the animated one on FX, um, about the secret agent. You've never watched it? I don't, I don't know. Oh, Archer. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. What that one lady yeah. says. I, sorry, sorry, Steve. I only watch uh, movies and TV from the 60s. <laughs> from the uh. 50s the, <laughs> only stuff that's like super obscure. Uh, well, yeah. anyway, I believe that's uh, all there is to this episode. Is there anything else to tell the people you hell? Uh, no, I think we're good to, to sign off. Uh Highly recommend you guys uh, seek out Batman, the movie from 1966. Mm -hmm. It's available. It's not streaming any for free anywhere, but you can rent it for two to three bucks from a any service. Uh, Vudu, Amazon Prime, just about Apple TV. Like, it's everywhere. Or or even just check out the show. Like, I mean. Yeah, the show. Yeah. Either one, either way you win, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Uh, and also, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, uh, tell your friends. That would be fantastic. Otherwise, we'll be back uh, next Sunday talking about something. We haven't figured that out yet. But anyway, uh, we'll see you next week on Obscurity Now. You've been enjoying Obscurity Now, a podcast that's recorded live to tape and streamed to Twitch and YouTube. Subscribe so you never miss an episode or hilarious quip. Take us with you by following the download links provided in the show notes to wherever you get podcasts. And take notice of our various social media links. If that's what you're into, I'm not here to judge. And make sure you join us live next week at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific as we continue to discuss more obscure media only on Obscurity, Obscurity Now. Now.